Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. Welcome to our lesson on order of operations. Let's take a look at it. What we are going to do today is we're going to figure out what is order of operations, and we'll talk specifically about two parts of the order of operations, the exponents and the parentheses, those parts that tend to give us a little bit more trouble in um, future math classes. So let's go ahead and get started. The order of operations is basically a pattern that tells us which order we do math problems. So we start off with parentheses. Anything that are inside of those brackets, parentheses, grouping symbols, whatever you'd like to call them, whatever's inside of there gets done first. Then we move along to our exponents. Then we would move along to our multiplication and division. I put these on top of each other um, because they get done in order in one step in the order from left to right as they appear. And you'll, I'll show you that in a couple examples today. Same thing with um, addition and subtraction. They get done in the order they appear from left to right. So this is the basic order of operations. I'm going to have this little icon up in the upper right hand corner of most of our screens from now on. But you might want to pause this and just write this down. This is the order of operations right here. Let's actually do some questions using the order of operations and you'll see how they work. So the order of operations is basically that you would follow these four steps in order. So we start out at looking at this problem 3 plus 2 times 5. Which do we do first 3 plus 2 or 2 times 5? Well the order of operations tells us the correct order to do it. Look at it first we would look for parentheses I don't see any parentheses, there are no brackets or grouping symbols at all. Then I look for exponents, we'll talk a little bit more about what those are later. This question has addition and multiplication. So let's go on to our next step. Multiplication comes first. Notice that we went parentheses, then exponents, then we hit our multiplication division step. So our multiplication and division would get done in this first step. In other words, that's what gets done first. So before we do 3 plus 2, we would do 2 times 5, which gives us 10. Now the operation that's left over is 3 plus 10, or addition, and that would get done in our final step. So that's how the order of operations works. You have to do it in this order. First we do our multiplying, then we do our adding. Let's look at another example. This one here has three operations. It has subtraction, division, and multiplication. So let's go ahead and start solving it. What are we going to do first? Well, if our order of operations says we don't have any parentheses or exponents, so let's move on. We would do our multiplication and division first. So we start at the left and move to the right. We do the first multiplication or division that we come to. In this case, it's 10 divided by 2, which gives us 5. Then we still have a multiplication to do. So we would do 5 times 3, which gives us 15. Notice it wasn't first multiplication, then division. It was multiplication or division, whichever comes first, working from our left to our right. And then after all of the multiplication and division are done, then we move on to our addition or subtraction, which in this case is subtracting 20 minus 15, which gives us 5. Doing it in any other order would give us a funky answer that's not what we're looking for. This is the correct way to do the order of operations. Let's move on to another sample question here. 3 squared plus 1 times 7. Whoa! Hold on there. What is that? This 3 with a 2 raised up there. I called it 3 squared or 3 to the power of 2. What's that? Well, let's talk about it. This is an exponent. An exponent is when you have a base raised to the power of an exponent, 3 to the power of 2. What it means is 3 times 3. Huh? How did, where did that other 3 come from? You multiply the base times itself, and the exponent tells us how many times we're writing down that number. So it's written down twice. Let me show you an example that will hopefully help to clarify that. 2 to the power of 4. That is in exponent form. So if I'm going to expand that out, I would write it as the base 2 
times itself, and it's multiplied times itself four times. So it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Notice in expanded form, we can see clearly, oh, that's what 2 to the power of 4 means. And then in standard form, we just simply write it out. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. So that would be our final number in standard form. That's how exponents work. You have the exponent form, the expanded form, and the standard form. So now let's go back to our question. 3 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 7. Let's use our order of operations to solve this question. First, there's no parentheses, so we're going to come to our exponents. So first we're going to solve 3 to the power of 2. 3 to the power of 2 is 3 times 3, which gives us 9. Remember, it's the base times itself twice. So now everything else remains exactly the same. Look at plus 1 times 7. So we finished the exponent part. Now we have to move on to multiplication and division. First, we're going to do our multiplication because that's what we have. We don't have any division. So we'll do 1 times 7, which gives us 7. And now we'll work on our addition subtraction. 9 plus 7 gives us 16. So our final answer for this question of 3 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 7 is our answer will be 16. All right, let's uh, do another order of operations question. 4 to the power of 2 plus 2 times the quantity of 7 minus 3. Whoa, what is that? And that's what we're going to talk about next. This is our parentheses. Parentheses are just grouping symbols, those brackets or parentheses that show us what needs to get done first. Let me show you an example of parentheses in action. 3 plus 2 times 4. That is a pretty straightforward order of operation question. We would do the multiplying first, 2 times 4 is 8, and then the addition, 3 plus 8 gives us 11. Now if we add parentheses in there, th the quantity of 3 plus 2 gets done first, and watch how it changes our answer. 3 plus 2 gets done first, that gives us 6, and we're multiplying it times 4. All right, now are you paying attention? Because 3 plus 2 is definitely not 6. It's 5. All right, I did that to see if you were uh, watching. All right, I know we're getting 7 minutes into our video. We have to keep you on your toes. All right, 3 plus 2 is 5. And 5 times 4 gives us 20. Notice how adding the parentheses changed the order that we did things, and it changed our end result. So we have to keep our eye out for parentheses and do what's inside of the parentheses first and then do the rest of the operations. Now, there are some situations where you get a parentheses and there's no symbol, like this, 2 and 100. Whenever there's no symbol given, it means multiplication. That's the same as saying 2 times 100, which will give us 200. Here's another example. 3 times 1,000 plus 4 times 100. I'll just do the multiplication there. That means 3,000 plus 400, or in other words, 3,400. Let me give you an, another even longer answer or question. 5 times 1,000 plus 8 times 100 plus 9 times 1. And the way I'm saying it should tell you that it is multiplication, but whenever you're given parentheses without a symbol, it means multiplication. So this is 5,000 plus 800 plus 9, which gives us 5,809. Kind of a ridiculous question, I know, but just an example to kind of show you how that works when you don't have the symbol. So back to our question that confused us a minute ago. Here we go. Let's go ahead and solve this. This is an order of operations question that has everything in it. We're going to start with parentheses. What's inside of our parentheses or our grouping symbols? 7 minus 3 gives us 4. Notice I've written in the multiplication symbol right here. So it's 2 times 7 minus 3, or in other words, 2 times 4. Now I'm going to do exponents, which is... 4 to the power of 2, 4 times 4, which gives me 16. Now I'll work on multiplication. 2 times 4 is 8, 
and my addition is the last step. 16 plus 8 gives me 24. So I just want to recap everything. This is a complicated order of operations question right here that has exponents, parentheses, multiplication, and addition in it. Basically, this type of question will help you to practice every part of those order of operations. Let's do a quick um, recap of everything that we learned today. We talked about order of operations, our parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, then addition, subtraction. We talked about exponents, remembering that our base is multiplied times itself, and the exponent tells us how many times we're multiplying it. And then our parentheses with our silly question that we put together with parentheses. That's what we've talked about today. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.